Hello and welcome to Polycosm. My name's Christina and today I'll be doing a continuation or rather extension of our most popular video on this channel, How to Pose DAS Models. In part one of this new episode, I will demonstrate how to set up the DAS Model Importer add-on in Blender called DAS Importer 1.4 by Diffeomorphic, I think that's how you pronounce it, or Thomas Larsen, which, and get this, will allow you to import DAS models that will include both a fully editable bone rig and textures, so you can polish your pose further all in Blender without the hassle of jumping back and forth between DAS and Blender, because that's just a freaking nightmare. <laughs> In part two, I will demonstrate how to save poses and facial expressions internally in DAS and this one you guys are going to love, how to import a model in a pose and to have them animate into a different pose, which opens up the possibilities for, for example, cloth simulation during a pose animation. Lastly, in part two, I will show how to tweak your model's textures to get darker or lighter skin or even alien-like blue skin, because why the heck not? <laughs> Let's get started. Before I proceed with the how-tos of this add-on, I did want to mention that Daz just released an official bridge which will let you export your Genesis 3 or Genesis 8 models directly from the Daz viewport. Just search DAS to Blender on the official site and it should show up as the first result. It's completely free and will give you a fully working rig, import all the textures, etc. But I found the bridge add-on in Blender is a bit lacking in options. In my opinion, this particular add-on will work better if you want to animate your character and do more DASy stuff in Blender instead of DAS, like facial expressions, editing the textures, etc. You can also convert your rig to a Rigify rig and use IK controls instead of FK controls, sculpt directly on the model with the press of a button and save that sculpt layer as a shape key and in my opinion posing is just more realistic with this add-on compared to the Diffeomorphic version. In the Diffeomorphic version you can get some pretty gnarly protruding body parts like in this 3D illustration I recently worked on. But with that said, I actually prefer the Diffeomorphic version as I just want a quick solution for a still image and I like posing in DAS, so yeah. You also get the option to import poses which opens up possibilities for a cloth sim while a model goes from a pose to another pose. The rig is also pretty straightforward and easy to edit, so it's all up to you really. Like, just try out both and see which one you prefer. If the Diffeomorphic one fails to install properly, well, just try the official bridge instead, maybe that'll work better for you. I highly recommend checking out Nazareno Gianelli's video if you're interested in the official bridge, because he pretty much covers everything. Alright, let's get into the Diffeomorphic version. Before I start explaining how I installed the plugin, just know if you run into any issues, please head over to the Diffeomorphic website and try going through all of the steps and documentation there before commenting about your issues. Not that I don't want to help you or anything like that, but Thomas goes over everything in detail, so it's just really useful and probably easier to troubleshoot issues through his instructions. So installation of this add-on can be a little bit of a hassle, so I thought I'd walk you guys through how I did it. On diffeomorphic.blogspot.com, Thomas Larsen, the creator, has two versions out currently. I'm working with the 1.4 version as it's just the most stable version out, but I'll most likely do a follow-up video on 1.5 once the stable version of that is out, as there seems to be a few new features. So there are two different versions to download, a development version and a stable version. I know a few people had issues installing either one or the other, so if one doesn't work for you, definitely try the other one. Right, once the zip folder is downloaded, save this wherever you keep your Blender add-ons and in the Preferences tab in Blender, head over to Add-ons, hit Install and find your zip folder. No need to unzip it, Blender will do this for you. Enable the plugin and you'll see a DAS tab pop up on your right. 
If you don't see this tab, just press N. Open Paths to Libraries and you'll see a drop down menu linking to your DAS directory, which by default is installed on the C drive. I, however, moved it to my D drive, so in order to locate that folder, I had to follow the same paths, but on my D drive instead. Just look at the last folder name and try to find that exact same path. If you try to download in a model and it's not connected to your DAS library on your computer, you'll get an output error text file which will tell you exactly what is missing and you'll find this file in this location specified here. I already had my settings set up and saved so I'll just load these in quickly. Once you have all of your paths set up correctly, you can save a .json file with the paths by pressing save settings file. Also, to avoid these settings resetting, which was a bug that did happen to me a lot, let's save the Blender startup file under File, Defaults, Save Startup File. If you're unsure of whether the paths are correctly set up, we'll find out shortly. Let's move on to the next step. This add-on still won't work though, so don't try to import a model just yet. We need to head over to DAS for some additional steps before that. There's a plugin that we need to install here. The script is found in the zip folder you just downloaded, so open it, open the 2DAS Studio folder and find export basic data.dsa and save it somewhere safe. In DAS Studio, select Window, Workspace and then Customize. In the window that opens, right click on Custom and press Create New Custom Action. Change the name to export basic data or whatever you want to name the plugin. Have the DAS script file box checked and press the three dots. Find the .dsa file we saved earlier and open it. Hit accept and you'll see it appear as a sub item under custom. Under menus, main menu and file, drag and drop export basic data to wherever you feel is natural. I put it under the usual export buttons. Press apply and accept and you'll now see this appear under file. Awesome! What this does is that it saves the information of the scene so when you import the DAS.duf scene in Blender, your model will come in fully rigged and textured. You don't need to export to OBJ or FBX or whatever, the scene file is all you need. And the .json file of course. <laughs> Every time I say Jason, I just think about the Jason moments in heavy rain. Jason! <laughs> okay. While still being in DAS, let's add one of the basic poses to our model and just save the file. In addition, we need to press the export basic data file we just installed and save that to the same place. Let's now jump into Blender and hit import DAS file. Hopefully you didn't get any errors. If you did see the file I mentioned earlier and connect your library to the correct paths. All right, awesome. What you need to remember is the add-on will import the state of your model like you saved it. So if you have an animation playing, it will import only the final frame you have stopped at and saved the file as. If I switch to material preview mode, you can see that the textures have been preserved, which is great. Up until the discovery of this add-on, I was unable to import models with textures in Blender. If you're wondering what all these black lines and dots are, that's the model rig. You can hide it under the overlays menu by unhooking bones or by turning the overlay off entirely. If you're completely new to rigs, the way you edit a rig in Blender is to select the rig so that it's orange and head over to pose mode. Now when you select a bone, you can press R to rotate it based on your view. If you want to freely rotate it without constraints, double press R. Some of the joints rotate in a specific way, like the forearms. Be careful with pushing the limits though, because unlike DAS, Blender doesn't really constrain the movement in a realistic manner, so it's easy to end up with crazily deformed models. Oh, and I should also mention, the model comes imported with a subdivision modifier applied to it, so if your computer is lagging slightly when you pose it, or try to move, scale, or rotate the model altogether, 
Just unhook the modifier while you perform those specific actions. I usually never touch the face rig as the deformations post-export are awful. So if you have a specific facial expression for your character in mind, it's wise to do it before you import the model into Blender. But yeah, posing your character is pretty straightforward. R or double R to rotate and press escape or right click during a transform to cancel it. And that's pretty much it. If you want to save a new pose, head over to object data properties, go down to pose library and create a new pose. Let's try posing the character a bit differently and adding in a second pose. If you want to switch between the two new poses you just created, choose the pose from the menu and press the magnifying glass. If you want your model completely back to neutral, press rest position and pose position to edit the pose. The brilliant thing about being able to further edit the model here in Blender is, well, imagine you've got a full scene set up and all you need is a character to interact with it. Importing the entire scene in Daz isn't exactly ideal, but what you can do is a rough pose in Daz you think would work for your scene, like the character sitting on a bench, and import that into Blender. If it turns out your character's sitting position was wrong and the legs are sticking through the ground, for example, you can adjust this all here in Blender. Or, for example, if you're doing an action pose that looks really kick-ass and daz, but when you import it into Blender it doesn't quite work, you can always tweak the pose a tad bit more to make it look good from your intended camera angle. Right, what about if you want to scale the model or move it in the scene? That's pretty easy. If you select the mesh itself and press G to move, R to rotate or S to scale, you'll notice it won't budge. That's because you need to move the rig itself to move the model. The model is parented to the rig, so wherever the rig goes, the model goes. Like baby ducklings following its mother. Look how cute. <laughs> All right, that's pretty much it for part one. Hopefully I've imparted enough information for you guys to pose some characters and create awesome blender scenes. There's a lot of options in the menu here you can go through, which I won't be touching today. But if you want more information, head over to the Diffeomorphic website and check out the documentation slash tutorial section. Like I mentioned earlier, in part 2 of this mini-series, I'll be exploring how to import a neutral A-Pose character, have them animate into a different pose, which opens up possibilities for cloth simulation for more realistic folds, or you can create clothing using the add-ons Simply Cloth and Garment Tool, links in the description by the way, <laughs> while the character is in a neutral pose and you can then rig the clothing to the armature and pose the character while also deforming the clothes. I'll also show you how to save different poses and facial expressions in Daz and how to change a character's textures after they've been imported into Blender. I hope this tutorial was useful. I pretty much use this method for all of my illustrations containing characters now. Part 2 is going to be a super fun video and I cannot wait to show you guys all the cool stuff you can do. Anyway, thanks so much for watching guys. Bye!